We're in Salt Lake City, Utah, and today we are gonna be trying all of those famous Salt Lake City foods. Everything from funeral potatoes. To us going and getting some over the top shakes. <laughs> over the top, huh? Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get started. <laughs> Our first stop is at a place called Tradition. They are open for brunch and dinner, and we are here for brunch. Let's go get our brunch on. <laughs> Traditions was opened in 2017 by two people that just wanted to share their love of food with Salt Lake City. And I think they are sharing it with a bunch of like Americana feel to it. And all the dishes are rooted to things in their lives and their homes. The main reason we came here today was for one item, and that is funeral potatoes. I'm excited because I've never actually had funeral potatoes, but they're a big deal here. My grandma makes something similar, but we call it potato casserole. Funeral potatoes are kind of a big deal in Utah, thanks to the Mormon community, who put this together as a casserole thing, using the ingredients of the 50s and the ready-made things to make things easier because they have large families and congregations to feed and they wanted easy food that tasted good. I think that these are more of like a family communal thing. It was very hard for us to find any place that makes them here, but here tradition. They've got their own take on funeral potatoes. It's got like cornflakes on the top and some cheese and some green onion and uh, I think it was a chili jam. Bacon jam. Bacon jam. Let's, let's give it a whirl. Ooh, so oniony. Those are really good, but also the fanciest funeral potatoes I've ever had. I didn't even get some of the, the bacon jam, so I'm gonna try that again. But so far I love that they're, they're very creamy and the, the green onion gives it like an extra pack of flavor. Mm. That bacon jam is so good. It adds like a little bit of sweetness and some savoriness in the mix. Yeah, those are really, really good. Funeral potatoes are generally a cheesy potato casserole. With all the extra seasonings and the bacon jam and everything, this is really elevated funeral potatoes. We also got the chicken and pancakes, which has an oatmeal maple breading, which sounds pretty good. chicken is moist. The syrup also has some like red pepper flakes in it, so it's got a little bit of heat to it. It's really nice. You know, that chicken is nice and crispy. I, I can definitely taste like the nice mapleiness of it. Jeremy's right, that I noticed when he was putting the syrup that it had pepper flakes in it, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> and it's tasty. I've never had a spicy maple syrup like that, but it's good. I've had plenty of chicken and waffles. This is the first time I've ever had chicken and pancakes, but man, these pancakes are like little pillowy bites of perfection. They're really good. Chicken and waffles, they're coming for you. That was super tasty. Yeah, it was really good. Even sharing a couple things. I'm not ready for our next stop yet, so I think, Jeremy, you've got the perfect place in mind for where we should head up next. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think you're gonna like it. Already from the outside, this seems like a pretty cool place, so I need to know more about it. Tell me about it, Jeremy. This is Ken Sanders Rare Books. They've been open since 1990. They're kind of a hub of counterculture in Salt Lake City. They have a huge selection of books, over 100,000, and all sorts of other ephemera and maps and photography. And you are in Salt Lake City, so they do have a specialization in Utah and Mormonism and just Western Americana, but you can find all sorts of cool stuff here. Wow, this place is really neat. I am amazed by how many old editions and like first editions and just kind of eclectic variety of like weirder, older books that they have. It's pretty cool. I love this. Their travel section is filled with like old timey travel books. Like this book from the 60s about where to find Toilets in London. Whoa. <laughs> the Good Lou <Lou-guide>. Guide. <laughs> That's kind of amazing. Yeah, they have some really cool stuff in here. Oh, 
We walked away with a few things. Jeremy got, I think, a new book, and I got a couple of older prints of like classic American literature. So that was pretty cool. Also very reasonable prices. I've been to other bookstores that have carried more rare books and they have been a lot more expensive than that place. So that was pretty cool. We spent a while in there, but I could have easily spent a lot longer. It's a really incredible place. But I, I think I'm about ready for some more food. What about you? Immediately get out of the car and I'm like, Mmm, I smell that. Smells like charbroiled burgers. <laughs> if you ask a lot of people where the best burger in Salt Lake is, they'd probably tell you right here at Crown Burger. This is the spot of the original location. They have torn it down and built a bigger location since then, but they've been serving burgers here since 1978. If you guys didn't know, Jeremy's actually from this area, so he's been to Crown Burgers before. This is my first time though, and I've heard a lot about it, so it I, I don't think it's overhyped based on what I'm smelling right now, but we'll see. <laughs> like, oh, awards on the wall. Just tons of them. Yeah, this is different than I expected. It's pretty much like fast food. I was kind of expecting it to be more like fast casual, but I don't really know what I had in mind. But yeah, it's, it's like fast food. But they have so many more choices than just like, you know, typical <laughs> fast food chain. They've got not only like burgers and sandwiches, but they also have a bunch of Greek options because I guess the family that started this business is actually a, a Greek family. So they have their, their spin on burgers, plus they have actual Greek food. Dang, that was fast too. <laughs> I like the like bacon tentacles sticking out of that. <laughs> I got the crown burger, which is basically their regular cheeseburger. It's got lettuce, tomatoes, uh, Thousand Island, which I don't know if the regular cheeseburger does, but also the big difference is it has hot pastrami on it. So if someone comes here, like this is the burger they're supposed to get, right? Yeah, that's what I would tell you to get. Get that nice charbroiled burger taste with all the good toppings, but that pastrami just adds that little bit of seasoning and salt. It's just really good. I'm not the biggest fan of pastrami, so I went for the the bacon cheeseburger, which the bacon is just like overflowing out of it, so that's that's a good sign. It does look like it comes with the Thousand Island as well, and uh, got your standard light lettuce, tomato, cheese on it. Mm. This is not a fast food joint. I said it was at the beginning. I was like, oh, it's like fast food. It's not. It's way better than that. The burger is cooked to perfection. It's just like chef's kiss charbroiled burger. The bacon is top notch, like high quality, very smoky, delicious, crispy bacon, like nice thick bacon. And yeah, that's a, a beautiful burger. I like the Thousand Island on it. I'm also gonna try Jeremy's because this is the, the, the one you gotta try, right? Look how much pastrami is in there. Like it's pretty loaded. Mmm. Okay, next time I would get that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought I wouldn't like it. I'm not the biggest fan of pastrami, but that is some excellent pastrami and just the combination of the burger with the, like the little punch of pastrami in it makes it a beautiful combination. Yeah, it's really good. I definitely get that one again. Definitely, even if you're kind of on the fence about pastrami, I feel like you should try that because it's wonderful. I may have already sampled the fries and they're delicious, but I haven't had them in fry sauce yet, which if you're not aware, fry sauce is usually a mixture of ketchup and mayonnaise, but it's very popular in Utah. It wasn't necessarily invented here, but they definitely have put it on the map. We will go through drive throughs and you know, sometimes in a drive through like at a regular burger joint at McDonald's or something, they'll be like, do you want any ketchup or anything? They'll, they'll actually say to you, how many fry sauces do you want? Just assuming that you're gonna want at least at least some because Utah. Yeah, they definitely have more going on in their fry sauce. It's like a little tangier than normal. I good. like it though, yeah, it's good, it's good. Good, good stuff. Good stuff happening all around. I get the hype. Yeah, that was wonderful. My burger was good, but Jeremy's was better. We were just talking about how when we were in New York City, we tried the famous Katz's Deli, the pastrami on rye is the thing you get there. And I, I liked it, but it was not my favorite thing. 
But I think that this is better for me anyway, because if you're not a big fan of pastrami, there's a lot of other stuff happening. So it's like a nice complimentary thing instead of being like the focal point of the burger. So yeah, definitely loved it. Can't wait to come back next time I'm getting my own pastrami burger. Utahns love their desserts. And so it was very hard for us to pick which dessert we are gonna have today because they've got them all. But the place that we're gonna be heading next is very famous, they've been around a long time and they're known for their shakes. So let's go get a milkshake. We have now made our way to the Iceberg Drive-In. It has been around since 1960. They also have really good burgers, handmade onion rings, but what we're here for their extra thick shakes. I know, I saw that they even have signs, like banners all the way around the building that say, famous thick shakes. <laughs> Let's go try one. What have we done? <laughs> These are the minis. <laughs> this is a mini size? Apparently. It's a regular like. <laughs> this whole cup, I guess. What did you get, grasshopper? Yeah. I got black raspberry. They both look good. They do, they do. I don't know about the degree of smartness that we have eating ice cream while it's like in the 30s out. The line in the drive-thru was out the block down the street, so we decided to go to the walk-up section and, well, I'm sure it'll be good, even if it's cold. Mmm, that's really good. Okay, I did not realize what I ordered, but now I'm realizing it's a combination of blackberry and raspberry, I think. It tastes like blackberry too. And it's actual like good real blackberries, not just a syrup. It's delightful. <laughs> it is a little cold out, <laughs> but that's really good. It's really minty and it's got the chocolate cookies in it. It's tasty. Well, he made a pretty good dent in mine but I don't think we're gonna be able to finish them today. However, the mini is, is actually like a smaller cup inside of there, we learned. It's not as giant as we initially thought, but I think it's still a little bit too much after the other food that we've had today. So I think this is where we're gonna call it a day. I think we learned that next time we come, we can probably just share one, even if it's a mini. <laughs> yeah, and I have to say, as much as they're like thick, 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 famous, thick shakes, at first I thought, hmm, no straw, but no, I don't I don't think even after a while you could eat this with a straw. They're they're really that thick. What was your favorite thing you ate today? Probably the crown burger. Uh, yeah, the funeral potatoes were pretty, pretty fantastic yeah, too. Yeah, they were really good. We didn't have anything that wasn't amazing though. I'm curious, what of the things that we tried today would you be most interested in trying? Leave a comment and let us know. And we will see you very soon. Bye.